With Season 5, we are seeing some changes to the meta, including a bigger push for Light Armor Melee. Now, in the past, I am one who never really enjoyed Light Armor Melee, it wasn't my favorite, but this season, due to two of the new artifacts, I'm actually really enjoying it and having a lot of fun. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the build that I've been enjoying and a couple different ways you can actually run it. Before we fully get into today's video, I do just want to say if this video helps you out, or if you just like it, please drop it a like, it really helps me out a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, including more build videos, loot videos, stuff like that, definitely subscribe to the channel so you know when those videos go up. And I stream throughout the week over on Twitch and YouTube, so definitely stop by a stream, say hello, lurk, anything like that. We would love to have you. But let's get into today's video. Alright, as always, we are going to start with the gear here. So with the gear, as you're going to see, I am running two of the new artifacts. We have the Nature's Wrath chest piece, as well as the Sin Hatchet. Now on the Sin Hatchet, I did end up putting a gem slot in it. So then I could actually scale with nature damage, as well as use it with other builds and have some you know versatility with it. And then on the Nature's Wrath, I still have health on it, which I put on with my uh, musket video and all that. So health, I really like having on uh, my armor pieces, I know some people kind of go different routes, but health is just what I end up going with. For the rest of the armor, what you're going to find is that I have nature harnessing and rune glass for nature damage on each of them. So that's a 4% increase in nature damage on each individual piece of armor here. And then for weapon perks, I have one weapon perk, which would be the enfeebling skewer on my boots. So I don't have it on my spear, but I do have it on my boots. Over on the spear though, what you're going to find is that I have Bleeding Sweep. So I actually crafted this a when I first hit 250 Engineering. Some of you were actually in stream watching that. Um, and I was really just rolling Rogue, Penetrating Backstab, and hoping for something decent. Ended up coming out with Bleeding Sweep, so I was really, really happy with that. Um, I did try selling it for a ridiculous amount of money, just thinking if it sells for a ridiculous amount, then it's worth it. Otherwise, I'm keeping it and I'm going to utilize it. And I'm really glad it didn't sell. I was hoping it wouldn't sell. Um, so now I get to use it and it's working fantastic. Like I said, with Sin, we did end up putting that gem slot in there. Um, Sin is a fantastic artifact, especially if you're running a very high debuff build. So bleeds, disease... Um, poisons, anything like that where you're applying debuffs, it works absolutely fantastic with it. So I do highly recommend this with other builds as well. I probably will try utilizing this with some other builds in the future, um, but it's been working great. For the spear though, I will just mention the penetrating backstab does not work with PVE, so keep that in mind, but I do plan on uh, crafting some spears myself with rogue, bleeding sweep, and something else on it, hoping for keenly jagged or something like that. Keenly empowered though is the one perk that you do not want on a weapon when you're running nature's wrath, because that keenly empowered will immediately go away, even if you hit that crit, it'll immediately go away because of the nature's wrath and the way that this works. Um, your empower expires 200 percent faster so a keenly empowered just instantly gone once you get it so do not run keenly empowered that is kind of like the one perk i do not recommend at all for the jewelry now the jewelry i'm going to go over two different ways you can run this all right so i've been running this two different ways and it kind of comes down to how you want to do it and what content you're doing so this first one is going to be purely for like more group content or if you know that you're going to have heals or if you're just very confident in your, you know, light melee or light armor abilities to dodge and avoid damage, um, this would be the first setup for you. So with this, uh, I always will run the same con amulet health divine thrust protection. I still run that with almost every single build. Um, I don't really change that to be honest. So that much is the same, but the difference is going to be the ring and the earring. So on this particular first setup, I have a ring that has hardy nature damage and purifying heart. You could swap out the purifying heart for, uh, you know, a bloodletting. Bloodletting would be really awesome just to increase the amount of time that that bleed lasts on top of having sin. But honestly, purifying heart is really, really nice, especially when you pair it with the stone form because you can get rid of all of all of your debuffs, um, you know, any of the debuffs that you happen to receive. 
uh, disease, all that stuff, it'll just be gone. So it is nice having the purifying heart, but if you want your bleeds to last longer, uh, you should be able to do a bloodletting ring and increase that. And then with this build, I'm also running Endless Thirst, which Endless Thirst, the only downside is your Empowering Toast is not going to work because, again, of the Nature's Wrath. But you do still get the Fortifying Toast, Refreshing Toast, and the Thirst, so your potions are just much stronger. Uh, your regen and your health pots just work that much better. So I do like running Endless Thirst with this build the way it is. Now, the other way you can actually run it... I'll show you here is actually running blood drinker instead of the nature ring and then you just swap out the earring which i like to go fortifying toast refreshing toast and nimble um you could swap out the fortifying toast for something else but refreshing toast and nimble is fantastic to have i really really do like those two perks and the fortifying toast honestly is not bad because you can pop actually a mana pot and that will fortify you so you can utilize your mana pots as your fortify and save your health pots and regen pots for when you actually need the health or regeneration so something to think about with your earring but if you do want to run blood drinker i really do like it and do highly recommend it um for me it actually works really well because i again am not the best light armor melee um, so from a survivability standpoint, it does just give me a little bit more survivability. And as far as open world solo content goes, it is fantastic. I highly recommend for open world solo content, run your blood drinker, and then just swap out the endless thirst for a different earring. Because for open world, it's fantastic. You can tank so much stuff. You can stay alive. You get a bunch of health back on the PVE. It works great. So those are kind of the two different options you have as far as running the build. Like I said, though, the current one that I have on with a nature damage ring just gives me a little bit more damage. We don't have the damage nerf, but because we're running the nature's wrath chess piece, the damage nerf from the blood drinker is only a 5% nerf as opposed to 25%. So that is something to really think about when you're looking at these builds because nature's wrath with blood drinker paired up still allows you to do a decent amount of damage. Just keep in mind that you won't have the empowerments to stack with it. So, that is what we're kind of looking at as far as the gear goes. I know it was a lot. Um, this one is just a little bit different because of the fact that I have two different ways that I like to run it. So then you can decide from there what works best for you. And you might want to change it like I do, depending on what content you're doing. But next, let's take a look over at attributes because it is a little different of a layout. And then we'll get into the mastery. All right, taking a look over at the mastery here, you can see it's kind of a funky layout. So we are going to go through it and I'm going to explain exactly why I have it laid out with 50 int and 102 con. So we'll start with the con first. So what I've been doing is I've, I did test between 150 and 200, and it's kind of up to you. Um, I've liked both. The 200's nice from a tanky standpoint. You just get a little bit more armor. The 150's nice because then you get a, a little bit more damage output. So I would say bounce around between 150, 200, see what works for you. But start with 150, see how your survivability is, and if you can work with the 150, I do highly recommend just sticking with that, and then from there decide, you know, some content you may want to do the 200, some you may want to do 150, but 150 is a good starting point. So I do the 102 because actually last season I bought a bunch of the roasted rabbit, so I have a bunch of 48 con foods, but you can adjust this number from 102 uh, you know, to 104 or whatever you need to adjust it to uh, in order to have your foods, you know, utilized correctly or if you have strength food, whatever foods you have, I go for 150 on the con uh, to start. Now, for the strength index, I have been doing the 200-200, essentially 200-200, and it's been working great for me. I've been really, really happy with it. Um, it seems like the damage output's great. I get to utilize a lot of these perks. Um, once you get into the 250 perk, then it's just not useful. Um, you know, you gain 10% empower for three seconds after successfully dodging an attack. Well, that empowerment will go away immediately due to nature's wrath. So I found that the 200, 200 works because if you go to the 250 and shave off 50 of your strength, you end up losing the 10% damage on stunned, slowed, or rooted enemies, uh, which is kind of nice to have since it's more useful than an empower that expires immediately. So 200, 200. Now with the int. All right, so the int, you may be wondering, why are we doing this? Well, at 25 int, we get a 5% damage increase to backstabs and random crit hits. So we stack that with our 10% bonus backstab and headshot damage. So that is a 15% increased damage to backstab. 
on top of the fact that we have a spear that has rogue and penetrating backstab. So we have a 15% increase to backstab, plus we have the rogue, which gives us, what, another 11%. Um, and then we have the penetrating backstab, so then we penetrate through 27% 27 of their armor. So it is a fantastic combination, and honestly, the 25 in is really, really nice to stack with the extra 10% from dex. Then at 50, we get plus 5% damage increase to targets inflicted with a damage over time effect. So with these damage increases that we're talking about, none of these are, are empowerments. So Nature's Wrath is not going to have a negative effect on these, meaning we can stack extra damage on top of the Nature's Wrath plus our Nature Harnessing and all of that. So that's why we run the 50 in. Um, I, was, I tried 150 in to see if is it worth it to try to get the extra 10% elemental damage. It is not. I do not recommend it um, because you just don't utilize it quite as much. Uh, it's just not worth it. The extra 100 attributes that you have to put in, um, if you have to take it away from dex or strength, it's just not as good in my opinion. You can try it yourself and see if it works, but this has worked really, really well for me. Just getting that 5% to inflicted with damage over time, extra 5% to backstab on top of the 10% to backstab and everything else we have going on. So overall, this layout has worked great for me. Like I said, mess around with some attributes though for your build and see if there's a different layout that works. If you do find a different layout that works really, really well for me or really well for you, uh, put it down in the comments and I'll see if it works for me because I'm definitely open to try some different things um, and shake it up, but I've messed around with the attributes quite a bit. And like I said, the 150 to 200 con has worked really well. I've been going with the 50 int every single time. 200 decks because of the backstab bonus. So if you are going to shave off some of those attributes, maybe start with strength and then, you know, go from there. But that's what's been working for me. So hopefully it works for you. Otherwise, like I said, if it doesn't and you find something else that does, throw it down in the comments and I will take a look and see uh, kind of what you got going on. But next, let's go take a look over at the actual weapon mastery build so you can see what I've been running. Okay, so to get us started with the weapon mastery, we will start with the hatchet here. So with the hatchet, you have a few different ways you can lay it out if you want, um, depending on what you want out of it. So this is the layout that's been working really well for me. So we go full berserk, defy death, and then we do go with raging torrent. And then as far as the passives go, um, you know, we have frenzied purge so we can get rid of the dots. And then also abilities and heavy attacks deal 20% more damage to targets below 30% health. So if we get someone low, um, then we can just hit them and we're going to hit them for more. Again, it's not an empowerment, so nature's wrath should not be affecting that negatively. Defy death, of course, just because we have all the points on that side. On the right side for throwing side, uh, I did go with infected throw because I did want the disease and with sin it increases the debuff which should be increasing the disease timing and then also applies a weaken as well. Overall, I love infected throw. I think it's a fantastic ability um, and very, very useful. It just doesn't always feel like it because all this is just like a little fart cloud out there, um, but it's actually really helping your team. So your farts can help your team. Just keep that in mind uh, when you're utilizing a hatchet with infected throw. Uh, as far as pa passive perks, uh, go with critical throw. So increased critical hit chance of all melee attacks. We're not worried about the range attacks as much. Uh, rejuvenating crits, so critical hits with light attacks and aim throws regenerate 10 stam, so we can kind of get some of that stam, roll, light attack, get some stam back, um, and be able to roll a little bit quicker. All attacks deal 10% additional damage to targets with an active debuff, so again, not an empower, nature's wrath should not affect that negatively. And then dodging within two seconds of hitting a target with an ability consumes 25% less stamina, so just, again, survivability-wise... We can kind of dodge, hit. If we land a crit, we're for one, we're using less stam. Two, we get 10% or 10 of our stam back. So overall, this combination of perks has worked really, really well. So now the differences that you can do. So what I would recommend is for sure run Berserk. Berserk has gotten me gotten me out of so many different um, situations. And the Berserk 20% increase to damage does not get affected negatively by nature's wrath either so you can utilize berserk go crazy with it get that 20 percent increased damage and not have that go away unless you switch weapons or your berserk runs out so again something really really important with nature's wrath i think berserk is a necessary perk um, after that 
the Raging Torrent. So I like Torrent, especially if I'm running Blood Drinker and in PvE, because you get a bunch of health back whenever you use it. So it is something to think about. Um, I've enjoyed it. I tried Feral Rush uh, for OPRs and stuff, and I still preferred Torrent. But if you like Feral Rush, definitely try it out. Otherwise, the other one I would recommend would be Social Distancing just for a root and, and all that because you apply a root in the slow. So you could run uh, Social Distancing. If you don't want to run Disease, then you could swap those out. But just kind of play around with the other abilities. Um, I think, though, with Infected Throw, the main reason why I really, really like it with Sin is because you're applying two debuffs with it. You're applying a Disease and a Weaken. So that's actually a 4% increase in damage output due to you being able to apply two different debuffs. If that Infected Throw lands as a crit, you've now inflicted three debuffs, giving you a 6% increase in damage against that enemy type. So even if the Disease is doing nothing against the PvE, it should still be applying the debuff and you should still get that damage increase. So that's why I think Infected Throw is fantastic. But again, you could always go with social distancing if you want. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you want to run for the build. But that is the hatchet. Next, let's look at the spear. So this spear build has been working really, really well for me. And again, all of these perks, I tried to pick and choose based on, uh, you know, non-empowerments, any damage stacks we can get that does not involve an empowerment. So we do have Sweep, Cyclone, and Skewer, which on Cyclone, I did not go for the pushback, but we did get the stamina. So you can roll into it, use your uh, Cyclone, get 25 stam back per target hit, and then kind of roll out of it. So really, really nice to have. Uh, sweep, we do go down to the Coup de Gras. And then we have the Merciless Strength, so 25% increased damage against knockdown targets. So when we knock them down with that sweep, we are doing 25% increased damage. Again, not negatively affected by Nature's Wrath. We did need a perk at the top, so we went for critical to hit chance. Uh, is increased by 10% when attacking targets that are at least 3 meters away, um, which if you're chasing someone, that can help. And then I always like going with Strong Conditioning. I run this on pretty much every spear build because you did a really big increase in stam regen uh, when your stam's below 50. So when you're like dodging around, try to keep your spear out. Because once you, like, let's say you double dodge, you get a 30% increase in stam regen rate as long as you're below 50%. So you can get back up to that 50% a little bit quicker. And then on the Impaler side, as you can see, that is the majority of our build. We have Skewer all the way down so we can get that bleed to last in or last up to 15 seconds plus with sin or if you have a bloodletting ring you can increase that even more um, but skewer is fantastic especially if you have enfeebling skewer and then from there like i said we just go with any abilities or any perks that gives us damage increases or a cc in this case where we apply a slow um, really anything to get that damage as high as possible without utilizing a single empowerment. Um, on top of that, we also go for cooldown reduction. So all spear ability cooldowns are reduced by 10% on the second hit of the light attack. So if you're chasing someone, just light attack, light attack, light attack, get those cooldowns back a little bit quicker. And then I always like to run the aggressive maneuvers. So your first successful hit with an ability within two seconds of dodging reduces all spear cooldowns by 20%. So if you burn through two different cooldowns, dodge into an ability and land it you'll get a massive cooldown reduction on your abilities and it's really really nice for the last one here we have the exposed wounds so critical chance is increased by 15 percent when attacking a bleeding target well with this build we if we're locked onto someone um we're almost always going to be applying a bleed sin can apply a bleed with the keenly jagged we've got skewer we've got bleeding sweep um, so we have a lot of bleeds with this build it really is a bleed build um, but utilizes some burst with it as well so i really really do enjoy it and then for the right tree we do run the exploited weakness so deal 10 percent bonus damage for each debuff on your target well this whole build is revolved around debuffs right so like i said with the sin hatchet when we throw an infected throw let's say we end up hitting them with a critical hit with a throw we have now applied those three debuffs we've applied the bleed the disease and the weekend so now our spear is at max damage for the debuff and our you know we get the damage increase on our sin as well and all that from the sin itself having that perk so overall 
being that this is a debuff build, um, utilizing this is fantastic. So if you can land that, like I said, land that infected throw as a crit and actually hit them, you are now at the max 30% increased bonus damage uh, on your spear. So it is fantastic. If you land that sweep after that, it does a massive amount of damage. It is absolutely insane. And I love it. It's very, very fun. But that is the mastery of the build. Um, you can get a really good idea of what I'm going for with it. But again, change up the build if this isn't quite right for you. And definitely let me know in the comments what you changed and how it's been working for you. Because I want to... I want to test different things out and see, um, but this is just currently what's been working for me. I always mess with builds, even after build videos, I still will mess with them a little bit here and there and just see what's working um, or see if there's any changes that I just enjoy that much more. But next, I do have a few clips of the build in action in OPR, so definitely enjoy some footage of this build in action. Season 5 has brought us many new builds, and honestly, I do have one more build with the Nature's Wrath chest piece that I'm very excited to get out to you, um, but unfortunately, Life Taker has been delayed because it is disabled right now uh, due to some bugs with it, but once that's fixed, I do have another build video coming up with the Nature's Wrath chest piece, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Make sure to subscribe so you know when that video goes up, but this Light Armor Melee build with Nature's Wrath and Sin has been working so well for me that I just want to keep coming up with more builds utilizing the Nature's Wrath chest piece and honestly branching out into a hatchet spear build has just been very very different for me very off from what I normally do so hopefully this kind of pushes you to kind of you know go outside the box and figure out maybe a new build or a new role that works for you uh, that you have a lot of fun with because that is the key is to absolutely have fun with whatever you're playing and in the past I haven't had fun with light armor melee finally am so now I'm very excited to be able to push this video out and help you guys maybe figure out if this would also work for you but that is going to do it for today's video so until next time I'll see you guys later